It's less a loose collective of writers and artists than it is a way to describe the shared themes and motifs resonating through them. It's an angle of approach and the tint of the light and the sound of a doll crying in the other room, just far enough away that you can't help her. It's a fallen angel smoking on the overpass and thinking about jumping off even though she knows it won't kill her. It's about trauma and what comes after. This is Kayla from Culture Just Weird. Stop <laughs> laughing at me because I don't know how to start a podcast. I don't think we're ever going to learn. No, no, we're just we're jumping right in. I've decided we're going. I'm we're in Kayla. our fourth season. If we're not, if we haven't learned by now, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I'm, I'm Chris. I'm a game designer and a data scientist. I'm a TV writer, probably some other things too. But today we are here talking to you under the pretense of Culture Just Weird, the podcast. Which is, that's what all, actually, I feel like that's redundant with podcast. Pretense and podcasts are sort of synonymous. Synonymous. <laughs> synonymous, excuse me. Synonymous. Do you have any business? Oh, yes, we do. We do have a business. We have a new patron. We do have a new patron. I put it in my notes, too. Oh, you I put saw it in that your notes. you put it in your notes, but, you, but I put it in my notes, too. All right. So, Thank you to name... Uh, I'm not looking at my notes right now. Thank you to Patrick St. Ange. I hope That's I'm, what it was, yeah, yes. I, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, from one hyphenated last name person to another, thank you for joining our Patreon. I hope that you enjoy. We really appreciate it. We appreciate all of our listeners, but we especially appreciate people who choose to support us on Patreon. Thank you very much. If you want to support the show, it is patreon.com slash culture just weird. We do bonus episodes, BTS content, polls, outtakes. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. But that doesn't take away from the content that we do on this main show. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm so excited. Kayla, what's going on? Because, like, for for several weeks you've been like, oh, I'm doing this one thing. And then the other day you're like, oh, I'm switching topics. And then you haven't been able to stop talking about how excited you are. I got out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and left. And you went, what's going on? And then I was just gone from you because I was down a rabbit hole for the next several hours and did not Starting sleep. at two in the morning? Yes. <laughs> I mean, that's, I don't know if that's healthy for you. I don't know if that really fits into our self-care season, but it does make me intrigued about the content. I'm, I'm so happy. I, I'm just, I'm happy because this topic feels like something that's more akin to the line or tulpas or some of our oh, like nice ones nicer cozier less scary topics that we've been able to cover and i'm just i'm very glad to have found this community that we're going to be talking about um, thank goodness and you sure you're sure it doesn't have secret nazis no okay thank god i don't no i'm not sure oh you're not sure oh <laughs> god damn it kayla i mean I, I'm, I'm not sure about that of any yeah, community yeah that's fair my uh, analysis thus far would say no. This is not a secret Nazi harboring community. Okay, so it's not like kind of the opposite. Tartaria is kind of neat, but maybe problematic. It's not in really in that category. No, not at all. Okay, not at all. Okay, well, I mean, in the year of our Lord twenty twenty two, that feels as pure as you can get. It, I mean, yes, this is clean and yes, pure. Yes, yes. So, Chris, as I mentioned, I was scrolling through Twitter one night, just you know, going to bed. You you know, you shine the the light of the phone into your eyes and that soothes you to sleep. Yeah, you get that bright white light in your eyes (laughs) just before bed, yeah. I came across a tweet from someone I follow and I could not parse the tweet in the slightest. That's that's rare for you. The tweet was from at Yuri Rando, also known as Frog Kosarek, and it read, quote, Sorry to ruin your fun, but empty spaces, in quotes, is not OSHA compliant and needs to be shut down. You can't just have PTSD fawners lie on the floor and wait for a sadist with poor boundaries to walk all over them. Classic unsafe work environment. What if the sadist trips and falls? Can uh, can you uh-huh. can you try and explain to me what this means? Uh, no, no. Yeah, no, me either. <laughs> Which I mean, look, that is pretty common on Twitter. Like, yeah, there are thousands of micro communities and niche interests and specialized knowledge that people chat about there and it's not possible to be well-versed in everything. Right. 
most times you can just kind of like shrug and move on. But there was something about this, like the indecipherableness of this particular tweet Mm -hmm. that really grabbed hold of my attention. What do you think it was? It, well, we're going to get to that, obviously. Oh, Oh, okay. It, it just, it, it hinted at something much larger. Like there was a bigger world behind the text of this tweet. And I wanted to mm. get to know what that was. Like, I wanted to figure that out. Right. It's like it showed you like a little tip of an iceberg yes. and you're like, wait, what? Yes. Yeah. So the, the phrase empty spaces in this context, like felt so mysterious and mm-hmm. unknowable. And I'm like, I wanted to know, I need to know the unknowable. Um, there were, there were other replies that were getting a kick out of what was apparently a pretty funny joke in this community. So I was like, wait, well, there's a joke in there. I, I, I guess this is a joke of some kind. We'll get to that. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the replies were kind of playing along with it. I, 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 I didn't know what community or fandom or special interest this tweet referenced. And I just, I had to, I had to know. Um, now I have to know. The responses, again, didn't help. Um, quote, you got to admit that the drones are doing a damn good job of wearing proper PPE at all times. I don't think I've ever seen one of them without a gas mask and a tire that keeps all of their skin covered and safe from potential hazards. Quote, I'm working on getting things compliant. Hardest thing so far is getting the angel girls to wear a safety harness when fawning more than six feet off the ground. This is making it worse. I'm more confused now. Quote, give every doll a high vis and flashing obstacle lights. <laughs> no. Quote, ugh, fine. Safety rails around the doll hole then. What? No, I'm being more confused by the minute. <laughs> so, okay. I clearly was not going to get any answers in this thread, so I needed to dig deeper. I searched empty spaces on Twitter in quotes. And Uh after scrolling for a bit through some unrelated tweets and through some others making cryptic references to things like dolls and angels and drones and witches, (laughs) I finally came upon someone asking the important question from at embers. Y quote, can someone please explain what all this empty spaces slash doll stuff is? What is it like some kind of kink or something? It's a good guess. Thank God. Yeah, thank you. What was, thank what was God, the Twitter handle? Embers Y. Thank you, Embers Y. Okay. In the replies, another user linked to a tweet from someone named at maybe else titled, quote, an empty introduction. That tweet looked like this. Can you kind of describe it to our listeners? Uh, yeah. So it's a. it looks like a desktop, like a Windows desktop. Um, I can see some icons in the upper left-hand corner, just like... You know, ye old standard icons. There's the computer recycle bin, a folder of some kind, and Internet Explorer, I guess Edge now, whatever the hell. And then in the middle of the desktop, there's a bunch of open text windows with a bunch of text that's too small for me to read. And also, for some reason, this is all themed pink. It's very pink. It's kind of like pastel vapor wave. Yeah. Like. It's very aesthetic, as the kids would say. Do you know, do I need to read these? Because no. you have to get me a microscope. We'll we'll get to that. Okay. Um, so it, it, there's like sticky notes on the desktop. It says an empty introduction. This is basically a sort of like FAQ for this community that we're about to get into. Um, the actual text that you can't read right now, since you'd have to zoom in, the actual text is super helpful in beginning to understand what we're talking about here. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of it. Okay, actually, yeah, if I zoom in, I can read it a little bit better. I, I think I'm just giving away my age at this point. You need glasses. Do I need glasses? <laughs> okay, so now that I can read. So the first one says, what is empty spaces? That's a pretty good question. It's less a loose collective of writers and artists than it is a way to describe the shared themes and motifs resonating through them. It's an angle of approach and the tint of the light and the sound of a doll crying in the other room, just far enough away that you can't help her. It's a fallen angel smoking on the overpass and thinking about jumping off, even though she knows it won't kill her. It's about trauma and what comes after. Um, okay. Read the next I question. Know, I don't know if that did, that didn't really answer the question. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to move on to another one. Uh, oh, oh, the actually, okay. So the next question is, <laughs> yes, but what is in capitals? Is it? Mostly microfiction written by trauma queers. That's both an approach to trauma informed by queer theory and traumatized queers, depending on who's talking. Okay. Cooperative world building using archetypal motifs revolving around the scars we bear and inflict. Okay, this is, okay, you're right, this is rad. And uh, that gives me a lot more, that that suddenly brings it a lot more into focus. I know, it's like all of a sudden it's like, what is going, 
oh, I get it. Yeah. I, I, like, obviously, yeah, yeah. it's not, oh, I get it and I fully understand it, but it's like, I'm flailing and, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, like the first, like that the moment, first paragraph was... That moment when, sorry to interrupt you, but it's like that right. moment when you're looking at um, like a Magic Eye poster. Yeah. And you start to be able to see it. Yeah, and then you're just like, oh, yeah, because that... That first paragraph was was um, beautiful prose. Yes, it was it was like a poem that you're just like that's beautiful, but I don't I can know what feel it, it but I don't know <laughs> if I can logic it. Right, right. Um, let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to the I'm gonna go to the upper right. What's this question reads? What's up with all the dolls and witches and angels? I also am wondering this. Much of the space grew out of at eager girls writings about angel girls and at trauma doll and at bad end dolls writings about dolls and witches. Hmm. So those concepts have ended up as central motifs. Okay. They're used in a bunch of different ways, sometimes as metaphors and sometimes literally. They're archetypal motifs running on vibes and trauma and queer yearning. Exactly what they are matters less than how they resonate with you. So that also sounds cool and also helps me understand uh, there's another question on here I think is pretty good. Is it based on anything? It's based on itself. While Empty Spaces draws on all sorts of different inspirations, ideas can ripple through it in odd ways. It's not fan fiction or an AU of pre-existing work. So AU means, um, I think it means alternate universe. So that's something like in fan fiction where if I wanted to write a story about... Um, Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy, but instead of them being Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy, it's those, it's Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy, but they are living in a castle in the 1800s and he's like the stable boy oh, and she's okay. the princess. Like you take like those characters and put them, or... yeah, okay. put them into an alternate universe. Okay. So there's going to be some overlap, I think, in this community where some folks who do write fan fiction and do write AUs and do... Um, engage in in that type of fandom or that type of um, creative writing, mm -hmm. maybe also um, create art in this space, but mm -hmm. they're not the same thing. When you come to empty spaces, you're not bringing the the Peter Parkers and the existing characters. Right. It's... You're not writing about Sonic the Hedgehog or Correct. Peter Parker or Harry Potter. You're Correct. writing about it's it's its own universe. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if it's its own universe, does that mean there's like a canon? Actually, this next question, yeah, is there a canon? Is there like, yes, this is part of the universe. No, this is not part of the universe. There isn't. One of the most exciting things about empty spaces is seeing the fresh interpretations that each new participant brings with them. Everyone has their own ideas about what things are and what they mean. And even the ones which are broadly agreed on tend to shift around a fair bit. Okay, so I feel a little ungrounded again. Yes, <laughs> which is great. So there's no, there's no like this is accepted as part of the narrative, and this is not. So like you could have someone writes a story about, you know, uh, Tim the fairy dragon, and then somebody else writes a story where it's like, it's Tim is actually a, a fairy hawk. I don't know. I'm not good at this, as you can tell, but like. <laughs> It's okay. Like it was just sort of coexist. Is that the think idea? of it less like um, th this isn't about okay. If we put it in the context of like Greek mythology, okay, lots of different stories in Greek mythology from lots of different uh, sources, right? Okay. Generally, you know, uh, Prometheus will always be the same character. Mm -hmm. So think of the motifs in this, like the dolls, the witches, the angels, the drones. Think of them more as like nymphs, okay. or or dryads, or tropes and characters that exist but aren't necessarily like these pieces of canon that are static and move around. It's more, mm -hmm. oh, in this like kind of subgenre, we as writers you pull on these pull pull from these tropes that we've kind of collectively agreed upon mm -hmm. or or have aggregated into this space. So there's like a shared mythology like a shared set of motifs and themes but not necessarily a shared like setting and narrative does, correct is that right okay i think so yeah okay okay so the oh uh, the, uh yeah okay this is this feels like this it feels like these questions are lined up exactly with what i'm thinking <laughs> it's a very good faq yeah um this seems really cool how do i join in usually people just start writing you don't need to ask for permission or anything. This is not a gate-kept or exclusive space. If it resonates with you, then it's for you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And actually, there was another thing I was thinking in, in absence of a canon 
correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like the cohesiveness of this must be in the community itself more so than like the canon story, like the empty spaces is yeah. the first to the community of writers. Yeah. There's no real canon story. There's not really even like cohesiveness I think is a tricky word to use here. It kind mm. of seems like there's a collective of writers mm -hmm. that a collective of micro fiction or flash fiction writers. We'll get to that, that um, tend to congregate on Twitter Okay, and you know, in, in their writing, they have all, gravitated towards including certain motifs or tropes in their work. The work, the work, it, like the individual pieces of work are not necessarily connected to each other in like narrative or plot points or overarching story. It's more, I'm writing a story about a doll who finds a witch and that's this little piece of flash, flash fiction. Mm -hmm. And somebody over here is, I'm writing a story about a drone who falls down a hole and there's an angel girl and that's that piece of flash fiction. What's a drone? Sorry. I, there, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm just call, I'm pulling on some, <laughs> I'm pulling from some of the tropes and, and, and things that, that is used in this space. So it's more like, I almost think of, think of the things that we're talking about where we're saying angels, witches, uh, drones, dolls, kind of like paint colors. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Kind of like paint colors. Yeah, that I mean that speaks to motif, the motifness of it to me. Yeah. So thank you again to um, else or at maybe else for putting together this this empty introduction because it really helped pull some of this into focus for me. Yeah, this is a great intro. Yeah, does that does that help? Do you have any questions? <laughs> I think I have a million questions. I'm just I'm struggling like whether I should ask them or wait. Um, I guess I do want to ask, and this is. I hate to keep harping on the canon thing, but like, I mean, what if I go onto Twitter and it's, it's, you know, this last question, right? How do I join in is basically just like start participating, no gatekeeping. Like, let's say I go on Twitter and I, I write, I write something and I link to it, hashtag empty spaces. And I, but the thing I write is just awful. It's just terrible for whatever reason, like. Like poor quality or doesn't really follow the vibe? Doesn't really. I would say doesn't really follow the vibe because I imagine this group to be a type like a more accepting of like. I don't think they probably care about quality as much as they do about like intent. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. I don't get the sense that this is a community of like being judgmental. Yeah, about. that's what it's, I mean. It's for expression, not necessarily like. Yeah, again, it's not a gate kept community. Right. I don't get the sense that there are arbiters sitting on Twitter going, you're a bad writer, you're a good writer. I don't know, I could be wrong, but I don't get the sense that that's really a part of this. Yeah, so my question is, is less, yeah, is less about quality and more about like, I mean, there's other ways to be awful if you catch my drift. Like, is, like are there ways for them, like, do they, does that happen where somebody like writes something and says, hey, this is empty spaces, rejected but from, yeah. doesn't really fit the aesthetic. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I kind of feel like it's one of those things and again, I'm very welcome, very open to being corrected on this since I just learned about this community. I'm not a participant of the community. I am an observer and an enjoyer at this point. Um, it, it seems like it's one of those things where because it's not a gate kept community, people who the vibe, like if the vibe resonates with you and you want to write something and it doesn't resonate with others, like that's kind of... That's okay. Just sort of naturally falls off. Kind yeah. Of thing. Okay. Okay. It's it's there's there's a collective here. So if you write a ter you if you write a story where you just write the B movie, but you call it the doll movie. Hey, that sounds pretty good. That's probably not going to punch through the noise of the rest of the community okay. and like okay. be any sort of issue. It's just if I don't I don't see that being like an issue in the community. I gotcha. could be wrong. I could be wrong. And if if anybody from the Empty Spaces community is listening. Um, I hope that you are. We're very excited to be talking about you and the work that you're doing. Please feel free to correct me. Okay. I know I still had some questions after reading this, though. I was especially because I was reading it like four o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> um, I know I had some questions. Luckily, I found another bit of helpful information or another bit of information. Okay. To introduce me to this sphere, I'm going to send it to you. Let's see if it helps answer some questions for you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, what, What's, what are you looking at there, Chris? I, what is, I was going to ask you that, actually. Um, That's not clear what you're seeing? It is a website, and I know this because it, there's a URL that, I, that you sent me to click on. So I know that it is technically a website. Um, 
It looks to be some kind. Oh, I can zoom in and out. Yes. Okay, I didn't realize that. I would zoom to a comfortable uh -huh. so that you can see all of it at once. Yeah. Um, let me do that. Okay. I can see all of it at once. I, it's art. It's there. It looks to be sort of like a map of some kind. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe mapping out these motifs and, and themes that you were and tropes that you were telling me about. That is exactly what it is. Because I see some little circles here. There's a bunch of connected circles that are connected by arrows. Um, and then there's like, it looks like there's some categorization circles like drawn around the smaller circles. But the small circles have the things in it that you were saying, like dolls. And I also see moths. I see drones. I see the liars. I see devils. I see... So there's like a lot of cool words in here. There's the void. Oh, there's witches. There's the unreal. There's, and I just mm -hmm. want to describe the imagery a, a bit. Like again, the, the, the coloring, there's purples, there's mm -hmm. pinks, mm -hmm. um, there's mushrooms, there's flames. There's, it, it almost looks like shoots and ladders in some way in the, in the ways that like the circles are connecting to each other. And then you know, expanding out to connect to others, like kind of like a flow chart in mm -hmm. a way. You know, some arrows are you're single directional. I guess all the arrows are single directional, but it's it's twisting, it's it's winding. It's all curves. It looks very organic as yeah, opposed it's to like artificial. Beautiful to look at. It is a piece of art, and again, this comes from um, Else, who put together the the empty introduction. Ooh, there's iterations. This oh. is called the Ways of Being map. Okay. And. Again, it's another piece of information to help kind of describe the emerging qualities of the empty spaces creative vibe. Collective. Okay. Yeah. Creative. Okay. Okay. It's it's very cool looking. So I was still very confused at this point, I'm not gonna lie. Again, that had to do with it being four o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to piece together what's going on on Twitter. I think that our listeners may still, I don't know, maybe you do too, could still use some stable f footing, some grounding in this community that we're now talking about. Definitely. And and also I will say that I am I feel compelled to just like pause the podcast and just, and just like look, at, look it. at this map for an hour and just like read it's all the little bits. It's beautiful and it's beautifully drawn and it's very, it's very complex. Yeah. It's very complex. Yeah. The, the, the curves that link... The little lines that link different circles that have words in them. So like linking drones to hives, for example, are actually arrows, which I think indicates some sort of like, you know, directional relationship. And then those directional that there's words describing those arrows as well. So it's there's a lot to unpack here. I'm totally going to look at this later. I know. I kind of want to print it out and just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because I just, the yeah, the arrows all have labels, and it's like, this is how the, we could spend probably the entire episode just talking about the complexity of this map. We, we have a lot to cover, so I won't do that, but yes, we're, we're definitely, the, the image of this map will be shared in the show notes, and we'll also be sure to retweet it on our social media, so you'll be able to see it. Let's, let's, let's step back a little bit. Let's, let's get a little bit more context overall, oh, just so God. we can feel thank a little God. more grounded for those of us who are less comfortable in this more esoteric, impermanent, ephemeral ground. So let's talk about flash fiction and microfiction. I think I've said those words a couple times. Mm -hmm. So from Wikipedia, flash fiction is a fictional work of art of extreme brevity that still offers character and plot development. Mm. So you know what flash fiction is. Like you've seen it before. Um, is that like the two-sentence horror Yes, two-sentence okay. horror stories is a type of flash fiction. Okay. Um, like flash fiction, it, it as a genre or style, it often gets um, divided further into sub-variants. So there's like the six-word story, which is, you know, think of for sale, baby shoes, never worn. <laughs> right. Did you know that that's not, we don't actually know that that was Ernest Hemingway? Oh, really? That is like maybe falsely attributed? Is, I mean, at this point, isn't, like, everything falsely attributed? Yeah, like I guess that? so. Still a great story. Um, microfiction is traditionally around 100 to 300 words. I came across the phrase Twitterature, Twitter which refers to, like, 280 <laughs> characters' stories. That's great. Uh, flash fiction is generally 1,000 words or less. So a flash fiction is a piece of writing that is 1,000 words or less. Okay. Thank you for that. Def I didn't know what the actual definition was. I knew it was, you know very tiny 
very tiny fiction. Very tiny stories. Like the two sentence horror stories that you yeah. see on Twitter, you see on Reddit, other microblogging sites. And I wanted to pull this quote from Wikipedia as well. Quote, some commentators have suggested that flash fiction possesses a unique literary quality in its ability to hint at or imply a larger story. Worded mm. another way, quote, it's not the size of the word count in the story. It's the size of the story in the word count. Ooh, that's a great quote. Right? That totally describes the for sale baby shoes never worn. Yeah. It also, I think that this kind of like, this is what drew me in about that initial tweet was the ability, the, the tweet's ability to That's hint true. at a larger story. And I was like, I got to know the larger story. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. What does this have to do with, wait, OSHA guidelines? And We'll I, get back to it. Okay. I assumed because of how perfectly it fits in the Twitter format that flash fiction was like a primarily like hyper modern form of art, like sure, very yeah. of the moment. I assume that too. It's not. Okay. Like at all. <laughs> Flash fiction actually dates back to the dawn of the written word. Wow. I mean, I, now it, that it you say that. It has been with us forever. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. Think of things like Aesop's fables or like parables or Zen cones, like all of those oh, are. Yeah, that's true. Basically like that's flash fiction by definition. Mm hmm. And in the U.S., flash fiction can be traced back to the 1800s with authors like Walt Whitman or one of my faves, Kate Chopin. Back at the turn of the century, flash fiction was referred to as short, short stories. We wear short shorts. And were featured in magazines and anthologies. Other prominent or well-known authors who, worked, who have worked in the flash fiction medium include O. Henry, our boy Ernest Hemingway, mm. Ray Bradbury, Italo Calvino, Bertolt Brecht, Franz Kafka, Augusto Monteroso, Luis Felipe Lomelli, Anna Maria Shua, Leila Al Othman, Lenore Goralic, and P.K. Parcadavu, among many others. That's a long list. There's also a thematic collection that I learned about that I desperately want to read by an author named Robert Owen Butler called Severance. Wait, what's the thematic? Co you mean there's like a... It's a collection of stories. That all like shares a... 62 short shorts where each story is about the last 90 seconds of consciousness of someone who has just been decapitated. Oh, oh my God. I don't know. That uh, that sounds a little too disturbing. That sounds like know. my dream book. Oh That's, my God. That sounds absolutely fascinating, but I don't know if my existential dread could handle it. I'm I'm doing it. I'm diving into it. You let me know how it is. So yeah, it has flash fiction, microfiction, been around for a long time, super embedded in the like body of creative writing as a whole. Okay. But while it's it's not unique to the internet, the internet has definitely spread awareness of the genre, like bringing it to new readers and to new writers who may have not been exposed to it otherwise, or may have not been like able to, I don't want to say like Twitter is publishing, but may not have been able to get their work in front of other in front of readers mm. without something like the internet. Mm -hmm. There are a number of online literary journals that publish or focus on flash fiction. And even the New Yorker started running a flash fiction series every oh, summer. That's cool. I didn't know that. So empty spaces basically refers to a collection of micro fiction stories and writers and their collective emergent vibes and aesthetic as it exists on Twitter and elsewhere on the internet. Got it. Okay. So it's it's a particular collection of these short, short, short stories and all of like the motifs and vibes and whatnot. That Correct. Go with. Okay. Yes. Let's get into it. <laughs> we're still just getting into oh, it. We're still just starting. Oh, boy. So first, I want to say I, you know, I, I just recently discovered Empty Spaces. My understanding of it is still evolving. What we'll be talking about moving forward are my observations from the last few days I have spoken with a handful of folks from the community itself to help shape this episode. Wow, just in the last couple of days? You were, I know. And I felt I feel bad for the people that I reached out to because I was like, hi, can I talk to you in like the next two days, please? Because I have an episode <laughs> coming out and uh, I'm going to be rushing you and making my urgency your problem. Um, I, I Because of that, I definitely did not get to have as many conversations as I would like. I hope to continue these conversations and to continue diving deep into the community moving forward and mm -hmm. you know maybe giving updates or doing bonus episodes about it i definitely want to keep this evolving sure sure yeah i've read you an empty introduction showed you the map of the ways of being uh i mentioned that these resources were put together by a writer named else else uses she her and it its pronouns and it writes stories on twitter at maybe else 
Alice and I chatted on, you know, just the Twitter messaging, and it was kind enough to answer a number of questions that I had about the community. So let's begin with how Empty Spaces started. Empty Spaces can be traced back to the beginning of 2021. So it's kind of... Oh, that's super... Holy shit. Yeah, it's still a new phenomenon. From Else, quote, the most concise answer I can give is that Kate, who's at Eager Girls and at No More Nights One and my girlfriend dragged me in when she started writing about angels near the start of 2021. It wasn't really empty spaces at that point, of course. Dolls and witches weren't part of it until at Trauma Doll and at Bed and Doll started posting their writing in June 2021, and Kate didn't make the list of writers until August 2021. This is a year-old community, essentially. Yeah, that's, like, brand new. But looking back, most of what I wrote in early and mid-2021 would fit perfectly in today's empty spaces, though it's less polished than my recent writing, end quote. I asked Else if it could further define empty spaces beyond what was stated in her introduction. It said, quote, I don't think I can come up with a better description than the one in an empty introduction, which we read, though it is more focused on the creative side. It omits the ways in which people resonate or identify with different archetypes and doesn't touch at all on how, quote, not a person has become a rallying call and signifier. At Alara Faye just posted a very good thread about both that and some of the reasons that empty spaces resonate with people. Sometimes I think of it as a micro genre. Kate likes calling it an art movement. Okay, so in Elsa's introduction, she described empty spaces as a collective of writers and artists using shared themes and motifs to explore trauma and what comes after. Mm-hmm. And then here, Elsa mentioned not a person, quote, not a person. So let's what is that? Let's talk a little bit about what not a person means, or at least we'll talk about my limited, my somewhat limited understanding of it. So there are individuals in humankind who do not identify as persons, and they may instead identify as things. This identity alignment can be due to maybe having experienced something like trauma or dehumanizing events, or from containing a number of intersecting marginalizing identities that cause one to have a life experience so deviated from the norm that they no longer identify as something recognizable in the mainstream as a person. So does this mean they don't identify as a human or I don't identify as a person or kind of both? I don't know. I don't know about human. I think it's more about person versus not a person, but that's probably a better question for somebody who actually sure. feels like not a person. Okay. This this might sound kind of this might sound very foreign, maybe even scary to those of us who are just learning about this this concept. It might even sound like a bad thing or dehumanizing to, you know, say I'm not a person or I'm a thing. I know that there are those in the empty spaces community who would argue against that and instead claim that not a person as a rallying cry is actually something empowering or at least something that offers the comfort of describing experiences that differ from what is prescribed. Okay. So else mentioned Twitter user Adelara Fay that there was a thread that it did regarding not a person. One of the posts helps explain this concept better than I can. And this post from Alara Fay reads, quote, I am not a person. And I want to say that not a person is capitalized. Okay. So Alara Fay is saying this. Yes. Okay. I am not a person. That's about oppression, trauma, alienation, identity, resistance. I do not want nor need to be fixed. I will heal in my own way, but I will never be normal. I will never be what society wants me to be. That's why I want not a person to be a slogan. Hmm. Or as Twitter user EVRAM Gold puts it, it slash its pronouns are a political statement. Not a person is a political statement. You can't take our reclamation of our inhumanity from us because you're uncomfortable with our happiness. I think I understood that. Does that make sense? Does does all of that we just talked about make sense? I think I understand. I may not, I don't, I don't know if I understand like in detail, but I think I understand the like wanting to reclaim or wanting to protect the idea of your own otherness as being something that's like okay and not pathological right i really resonate with that that makes sense the idea of like i am either through identity or through circumstance or through things that have happened i am different Mm -hmm. i am so different that i am maybe even unrecognizable Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i don't need to 
change that. That yeah. is who I am. The, I don't need to change this. This is who I am thing. Super That I understand. It super resonates with me. I think what's more challenging is it's hard for me to, like a lot of how I typically understand things is like, is through my own empathy and like, say like, okay, how would this feel? Like, mm-hmm. how would this feel if I were this person? And I'm struggling with that. Like, I'm struggling with what it would mean to feel like, how would it feel to feel like you're not a person? Mm-hmm. Um, that's where I think I'm more confused, but I right. do, I do the part where I do have like some like internal touchstones that I can kind of like resonate is what we were saying is right. the, like, yeah, is the is the unapologetic the, the not apologizing for your differentness. Right. Yeah. Right. I I, I do want to reiterate. I I maybe said this earlier. I'm not sure if I did, but Empty Spaces is largely, maybe even exclusively, comprised of queer writers. Mm-hmm. It is also made up of a number of creators who are plural. So our listeners might remember us talking about plurality when we covered tulpas in, I think, season one. Was oh, season one yeah. tulpas? Season one was tulpas, baby. Season two, we talked to Nikto and Tupsi. Yes. God bless but the season tulpas. season one was the tulpas episode, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly define plurality. Plurality refers to the experience of having more than one or multiple distinct personalities, identities, or consciousness contained in a single mind-body. Mm-hmm. Uh, the plurality community will then, that means it includes people with dissociative identity disorder, Tulpa mancers and their tulpas, you know, there's a there's a wide spectrum. It includes much, much more, but generally think of it as there's a body and there are more than one personalities inside of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Plurality can result from experiencing trauma, but it can also arise without it. Being plural can be a traumatic experience in, you know, the way that individuals may be treated by society. And so not a person may be a relevant concept for many in the plurality community. Actually, that helps me understand. If I think of like what a tul- like a tulpa might identify as not a person. Right. right. So that actually, now I understand it a little bit better. Okay. I'm glad that helps. Uh, it just seems like empty spaces might be a creative outlet that appeals to those with, with these experiences, appeals to uh, plural people, appeals to uh, queer people that maybe have many different intersecting identities amongst those spectrums. Mm-hmm. So, okay. <laughs> Do we have a better sense of how empty space is formed and who might be involved in it. Yes. All Wait, right. how did it form? Again? Oh, in Tony 21 with the... Uh, with with Eager Girls and several other writers, basically starting to do microfiction on Twitter that started overlapping in themes that were being explored okay. and then it kind of... A, it like, kind of snowballed? Sm- snowballed into this okay. collective. Okay, okay. Let's get into some of the whys. I asked Else what brought it to empty spaces and she said... Quote, as far as why I'm a part of this weird thing, I've always been fascinated with body horror and transformations. I think that comes with being trans. I adore writing that blends metaphor and unreality and reality. I like trying to capture my own experiences in words and weaving stories that evoke feelings that I can't describe in any other way. It's a writer, baby. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say that. that, I can see why that would appeal to you as a writer. uh, Body horror, transformations, like... Reality Mm. and unreality conflating. Yes, good stuff here. Mm -hmm. When I asked what the community is like, it said, quote, it's always seemed friendly and welcoming to me, though that's generally the sort of thing people near the center of a community say, isn't it? (laughs) Almost everyone involved in it is queer in one way or another. It started out almost entirely trans femmes, and we still comprise the bulk of the community. But there's a growing contingent of trans masks making extremely cool art and playing with angelic metaphors. In my opinion, the way that the entire community leans towards queer as default is one of the most cozy things about it. Okay, and trans just so so trans femmes means it is it means a trans person who uh, embodies feminine qualities and ma- trans mask is that, but for masculine qualities. Yes. Okay. Yes. I love the idea of queer as default being cozy. <laughs> I just there is something very special about finding a community in which if you're a marginalized person, you're marginalized in some way or you're different in some way, finding a community where that differentness is default. Yeah. That, yeah, that cozy is such a good word for that. comfy and cozy, right, right. Yeah, It's it's a place you can kind of just breathe differently. Right. Yeah, Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, as a white dude, I... (laughs) 
As a white dude, all of society is that. As a white lady, all of society is that for me. But like, okay, for example, I, I can say that when I go to, when I see a movie that has a white male protagonist, okay, it makes me feel so cozy. Right. Ninety nine percent of the time. For example, as a bi person, I'm almost never in environments that are like that's the default. I can expect mm. that everybody around me is this as well. Sure. It's just that's and I have so many privileges that I I have that coziness all of the time. Mm-hmm. But for that particular aspect of my identity, I don't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Finding an internet community where it's like, not only is that like the norm, that's just like the default. That's just the expectation. That's just like, that's just what it is. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm, I'm really glad that this exists for people. I, I really hate to use this phrase, but it's like a safe space. I think like in the literal sense, reclaim safe space. Right. Like I if, want to be in safe for, space. Forget all of the baggage with that, and just the words "safe space" right. feel like they apply. It's here. a safe arena. It's there a you safe go. Location. Safe, arena. safe empty space. <laughs> safe empty spaces. <laughs> Um, so let's talk a little bit about those angelic metaphors that else mentioned and, and the dolls and the witches and the other top, the other tropes that we've mentioned. Okay. When a community is this new and like this ephemeral and this creative, honestly, like it can be difficult to nail down things like definitions and explanations and like, mm-hmm. um, especially when it seems like a lot of this writing is exploring one's own psyche through metaphor and symbolism. It's like that stuff gets hard to define because it's it's it is nebulous it is well i'm doing big movements with my arms that our <laughs> listeners kayla can't is see, flailing but you can see it so maybe you can translate this kayla is is just wildly swinging her <laughs> arms around don't oh god don't knock the microphone over sorry um one of the things like as you're saying this it kind of feels like the the lack of of strong of um it kind of feels like the lack of secure footing is more of a feature than a bug, though, mm-hmm. right? It sounds like part of the conf- like part of the confusion is part of the point, right? right? Like it's about the fluidity of of certain concepts, and it's about the conflation of reality and unreality, right? And like Elle said, it's like it's about transformations, and in that environment, in that like like extremely like unfamiliarly so in fluid environment, right? I think it. Like I said, it makes sense. It's a feature, not a bug, that I would be, like, feeling a little unmoored. I would venture to say that there's some expression of the trans experience as a whole in Mm. the way that this kind of manifests. And I'm speaking as a cis person, so, you know, don't take me as any sort of authority. As an outside observer, however, it does kind of feel... It makes sense that people who have been through the process of examining an identity an aspect of identity that feels in mainstream society so concrete Mm -hmm. and so Mm -hmm. unchallengeable right just like so fundamental like that's just the way it is if you have the experience of examining that and challenging that and changing it and realizing it doesn't apply to you in the ways that it you know applies in this mainstream society makes sense to me then that creativity in yourself manifesting as being comfortable and maybe even cozy in a Mm -hmm. space that is more nebulous and ephemeral and fluid Mm -hmm. like the word you used Mm -hmm. it feels like that feels reflective to me in a way Mm -hmm. again as an outside observer it's like being in a cozy lazy river (laughs) (sighs) who doesn't want to be in a cozy lazy fluid it's moving all around there's comfort but it's cozy there's comfort in the unstable footing yeah. And I feel like that that's maybe also reflective of like having traumatic experiences mm. or being plural or having having these non-normative experiences. Mm-hmm. There's maybe more comfort in the instability than not. Damn, this episode got deep. Dude. I'm not I a psychologist. I shouldn't I didn't even be. smoke or anything. <laughs> I, like, I feel like we're getting like super deep. I love this episode. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, okay. Let's, let's, let's talk about the definitions. Luckily for us, yes, it's nebulous and whatnot, but... An Empty Spaces Dictionary actually exists, and it's pretty fucking cool. All right. Lexicons are the best. Twitter user at SheepWaveN created the dictionary on her site, and it defines the following in an Empty Spaces context, or some of the following. I won't read them all. So we've got Empty Spaces, Doll, Witch, Angel, Halo, Purpose, Spider, Moth, 
compact bound, stillness, void, puppy, god, clown, <laughs> slime, reflection, shadow, and and several others. This feels this is like begging to be turned into like a tabletop game. Oh, that could be pretty cool. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just send this to you as well, just so you have it. So these are the terms or tropes that are used often enough in various empty spaces writings that the community has kind of like emergently decided these should be somewhat defined. And mm. I say somewhat because the way that the empty spaces dictionary works is that when you click on a term, three definitions drop down. Each definition is pulled from another empty spaces writer's tweets and the definitions refresh each time you click. So they're not whoa, even whoa, whoa, like... Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, say that again? <laughs> So it's not even like a solid definition. It's like an ephemeral changing, like maybe related, maybe not kind of connected only in like vibes or not kind of way. It's like the way that it defines something. Is it like licks its finger and sticks it in the air? A little bit. <laughs> so do you, do you want me to explain it again? Yeah. Can you please explain it again? Sorry. Cause it just the, so, t- the mechanics of it. So there's a list of terms. Yeah. I see you the list cl- of terms. You click here. on a term that you mm-hmm. want to find. Okay. I clicked on combat doll. Did three definitions drop down? Yes. So I got three, three definitions lines. drop down. Do you want me to read them? Let me finish explaining it and then I want you to read them. Okay. So each line, each uh-huh. definition is pulled from another empty spaces writer's tweets. Okay. So it specifically knows like a certain subset of Correct. Twitter users? Okay. Correct. Okay. And the definitions are going to refresh each time you click. Okay. That is super rad. I can't wait to click again. But first, can I read these? Yes. All right. The three definitions for combat doll are... Plays Minecraft and is good at redstone. <laughs> the second one is CW content warning blood. I think that I'm starting to get a picture a little bit here. And then the third is it's odd how she dodges the question of what she does. The, like, see, the what's cool about this is that I f- kind of feel like it's almost less of a dictionary and more of a like flash fiction sampler. It's right? like a vibe vibe roulette. Yeah, yeah. It's like flash fiction vibe roulette, which feels very like tightly integrated into what they're trying to do, right? Yeah. Like a, I think, you know, like a Merriam Webster's wouldn't wouldn't feel um, on brand, <laughs> but this super does, right? This yeah. is like it's always changing, it's never the same, and like literally, it's here. It's odd how she dodges the question of what she does is totally its own like little flash fiction thing. Yep. Like, that makes me wonder who's she? Why? What is she dodging? Why is she dodging? Like- Let me read you what I just got when I clicked on empty spaces. So empty spaces probably brought about by the collective trauma of the pandemic. Head empty, heart gone. Oh. You can mend a plush, sew it back up, but the scars won't ever disappear. Wow. And then if I click it again, different. If I click it again, different. If I click it again, different. It's just, I love this, this tool. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. At Sheepwave N, just like, this is incredible coding, incredible idea, the crowdsourcing the of design it. The design The is... design. Oracle. <laughs> Oracles have seen the end. Hasn't taken her meds in weeks, I warned you. Yeah, and, and I'm not, when I say design, I don't just mean like the art is cool, but I just mean like the, I guess you said, it's like the idea for this, like yeah. the the idea for what it does is like... Where does somebody come up with that? That's so like... It's so creative. It just tickles my brain. Yeah, I know. You asked earlier what a drone is. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Let me click on it. Hold oh, on. I clicked on drone. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to get two different things. <laughs> yeah, so, what does your say? New Hive looking to settle down with two or 3,000 drones. That makes sense because you got to have a lot of drones. Uh, <laughs> the next line, uh, quote, 48, 65, 78, 63, 6F, 72, 70... 20, 69, 73, 20, 61, 20, 63, 75, 60, 74, end quote. <laughs> so that clears it up a lot. And then the third line says synths, like synthetic synths, are a bit like drones, but with no human inside. And again, it's a, like that third one, again, it just feels like a little bit of like flash fiction. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh, I just want to sit around on the I mean, because it is pulling just... from flash fiction. So it True, makes sense. that makes sense. But, okay. But the way that these things go together, it's like your brain starts connecting the dots in between the lines mm-hmm. and creating this own emergent story. And like, I still don't know what a drone is, but like, it's good that I don't know what a drone is because it's mm-hmm. better that I start to feel what this is trying to represent and figure out what that like represents. It's almost like looking at a, like an inkblot test where I'm like, what does this mean to me? You know what it's like? It's like a chair. Like you can't really say like you can't <laughs> no, no I'm I know. or a sandwich it's just, right it's funny that you say chair because the chair argument of like how do you define a chair yeah. that 
um, includes all things that are chairs and excludes everything that is not a chair. Yeah. Is an argument that <laughs> is used to explain why you cannot define a woman without ex- like if you try to ex- oh, define a woman interesting. and exclude trans women you're going to exclude cis women you're going like you can't do it i literally had no the idea the chair the chair thing in particular like huh. i have seen that used as as an explanation for why trying to have these very binary limited um explanations for like what is a woman what is a man to mm-hmm. in try, while trying to exclude people who may be trans in favor of those who may be cis, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you can't do it. You're it's, going to be exclusive interesting in that ways that's, you don't intend. It's, yeah, that, that dovetail. I had no idea that that dovetailed there. The reason I brought it up is because chair, you know, the thing where it's like, yeah, it's like you said, it's so hard to like sit there and define it that it includes everything that's correct and includes everything that's incorrect. An individual but seat what you can, with four legs and a back. Does that sound like a chair? It, it does, but... It also describes w- a horse. Right. So, <laughs> So what I'm saying is that like... But we still know what chairs are. And right. the reason for that is that there's just like a lot of examples. Right. 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 Like we are experiential, our continued experiential examples with chairs is what gives our brain this like concept of chair. Right. And it kind of feels like that's what this dictionary is doing. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like it's not going to it's like a dictionary devoid of definitions, but a bunch of using it in a sentence. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can keep getting these example sentences of like what drone. It's never going to tell you what a drone is, but by the time you see all these examples, you'll be like, you'll have, you'll know. Right. That's so cool. I know it's really cool. I it's hate really how cool, cool that is. So like, I cannot really define these things for you, and I think that that's yeah, that's the point. That's the point. Yeah, it's the point, and this dictionary. So it's, it's like yeah. an anti dick. It's like a doll is here, witch is here, halo yeah. is here, but all I can really give you are the pieces of flash fiction that people have already written. Damn, this is such a cool idea. I know. (laughs) I know. Uh, We will, of course, link to the Empty Spaces Dictionary that at Sheepwave N created. Um, We'll link to it in the show notes. We will share it on social media as well because it's it's such a beautifully designed tool and I could spend a lot of time just sitting here clicking. By the way, there is a definition for a sandwich, is just so we're aware. <laughs> we okay. spent eight hours. We spent a very long time discussing this. this out. <laughs> and the answer is that it is one thing in between two other things. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> one thing between two other things. So and those, it could be anything. We, we can't get into it because yeah, it'll, no, it'll, it'll take, take us eight hours. So did this help give you a better grasp on the kind of aesthetic or vibe we're playing with here? Totally, which is like super meta because I didn't understand it when you were just defining it. Right. But now that I've experienced it, I kind of do. And I think that the more you sit around and click in this thing, the more. Yeah. The same with like, you know, scrolling God, on Twitter. As a game designer, this just makes me so <laughs> jealous. I know. Oh. Scrolling through the, um, like the empty spaces writer list on Twitter also really helped me. It's like, I can't, I can't define it for you, but like when, now when I'm scrolling through my main feed, mm-hmm. when I see an empty spaces tweet come across, I'm like, oh, I, I know what that is now. The way that this just like gets into your brain and just like kind of pokes at it and like a, like tickles it. Yeah. Is just like, if I, God, if I ever do something like that as a game designer, I will feel like mwah, chef's kiss. I hope one day. I want to say that, and we kind of got into it a little bit, but I, I just want to say that like these themes and these motifs, like everything feels very, very layered, like containing oh, yeah. multiple meetings. Like there's lots to dissect and analyze and uncover. Like it's a literature, high school literature's wet dream. <laughs> like it's my wet dream. Like I yeah. just, I, I really appreciate the deep layering in this creative <laughs> world. And it's something that I think you can often see when you interact with art created by trans people, like specifically mm. created by trans people or art that comes from largely trans communities. Again, I'm saying this as an observer, but it feels like people who have done more examination of of their own gender, of like this very, you know, fundamental thing, yeah, produce art that has certain nuances that I don't see elsewhere. I think, yeah, those folks... Like, think uh, about The Matrix. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. so The Matrix is a great example, right? I know that that's, like, the, the low-hanging fruit, like, first thing to grab, okay. but it's such that's a great example. That's my favorite kind of fruit, Kayla, because then I, then I don't have to get a ladder. Yeah. Like the Aesop's Fables, the grapes, <laughs> I'd rather have low-hanging grapes because then I could get it, and then I wouldn't be sour grapes. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, I just... I, th- if, I mean, this certainly, I think, applies to The Matrix, but, like, folks who've had that kind of experience are able to sort of peel back certain layers of reality in a way that 
those of us who haven't had that experience can't right there's like these certain assumptions that like it's like it's like this like it's like a black swan kind of thing where it's like you don't know until you know right. like you and then it kind of takes somebody who's like had that experience to to show you that that layer right, of reality right. is even capable of being peeled back which is i think what lets the rest of us look at it and go like whoa and this is why selfishly i want i want experiences of people that do not look like me do not have have lives like me i want those experiences in art more yeah because it's it's so, it just makes reality so much more expansive. I do just because like I want it because I'm selfish, right? Like, I, that's I, what I'm saying. Like yeah, selfishly, yeah. I want to have these ex, th- this experience that I'm having with empty spaces right now. Like I want this. More of that, I want yeah. more of this. I want to be able to connect to experiences that I will never fully understand, mm. but I want to connect to them, and I right. want to know about them, and I want to. I want to be able to have those experiences just give me a little bit of that expansion. Mm-hmm. And that is definitely like, yeah, that's totally selfish. I'm, I'm so glad that people are getting to express themselves. Yes, of course. And also siphoning it off a little bit too as the art observer. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I want more that's of that. That's the thing. Yeah. That's what's, that's, it's a great symbiosis. They get to express themselves and I get to like see their expression. It's awesome. God bless art. Uh, I asked else what prompted it to write an empty introduction and the ways of being map. So those two tools that we already looked at. And it said, quote, the first three iterations of the map were in late June 2021. Looking back, I'm shocked to remember that they were all on one day. So so the first three three were done on one day. Just a confession. I was clicking through the iterations as you were talking earlier. (laughs) That makes sense. Um, (laughs) They were all on one day, gradually elaborating and adding detail to what started out as a very bare bones attempt to illustrate the connections I saw between different concepts. The idea came to me in the shower and it just felt like it made sense to do. Mm -hmm. Rather, a lot of what I do is driven by sudden moods and fixations. I try to follow the fun. Relate to that. Okay. These guys are game designers. I'm sorry. (laughs) This this group of folks are game designers. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. The introduction came out of discussions that had been bouncing around empty spaces for a while. Also, I'll say that Empty spaces is oftentimes shortened to just ES. So ES started out intentionally obscure and still is, though Sheepwave ends dictionary and my introduction have both done a bit to change that Hmm. in a way that made things difficult for people who were just running across it, especially anyone who wanted concrete answers, just like you and me. (laughs) (laughs) I, but you know what? Oh God, it's just the, the experience of just of the, my, like my past hour is just like, the design of that experience is just so cool because like I went through a bit of an evolution of, of like, I don't understand. And like the demand to understand, like my yeah. brain, you know, like when you first encounter something that's yeah. like so different or confusing or like unstable, you know, your brain is just kind of like yelling at you, like understand this, understand this, right. understand this. Right. And like the gradual sort of like washing away of that, as you showed me some of these things was just like a fucking trip to do like just sitting here doing it i'm glad you're having a good experience i am this is fun to continue this answer uh quote if i recall at that point there had been a few attempts to put together threads explaining particular aspects of it so it just felt natural to write up my own attempt with help and proofreading from several other several of the other writers i talked to on discord i'm really quite pleased that people still find it useful those probably do for an update one of these days End quote. And you and I will be right there waiting for the update. Yeah. Can I get like a notification <laughs> list or something? Uh, I, I just want to, I know we've been checking in, but I do want to take another moment to just check in with you. Like, what are your thoughts so far? How are you feeling? You did just say you've had, you explained the experience you've had. So like, maybe we don't need to check in right now. That was my check in. That was your check in. Okay, here, here it is. Mwah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I've like been wanting to talk. I literally found out about this. Uh, how did you not tell me on Tuesday? Wow! And it's Sunday right now. Yeah. I don't even I haven't even known about this for a week, and I'm just what a torturous several days for you. I know it's hard. It was. It's been hard. It's been tough. I'm so glad to be able to talk about it now. You I've... hear that, listeners? We <laughs> sacrifice. We don't talk to each other. We we, we ruin it's our terrible. marriage. Terrible. So. <laughs> I do want to transition now into talking about trauma. So we don't really get into too many Mm. um, difficult specifics, but just uh, be aware if you're listening that we are going to talk about trauma. Mm -hmm. We've talked a little bit so far about how exploring trauma is a central theme in empty spaces and in the works and how many writers in the movement 
experienced or have experienced trauma in their lives. Writing in the empty spaces aesthetic seems to be a therapeutic exercise for many mm-hmm. in the community. Mm-hmm. So those tropes we explore, dolls, witches, angels, they all take on layered meanings representing aspects of abuse or other traumatic events. And probing one's own trauma using these tropes acts as a form of therapy. And I, I don't mean to... I'm using the word therapy just because of like the limits of my own vocabulary and the limits of the English language. I don't mean that really in like the CBT talk therapy way. I mean that in a like people get like to a processing e- kind of way. Yeah, like people get to examine what happened to them in a like through a symbolic lens kind of way. I definitely have experienced that in a big way with the art that I have done for our game project over the past year. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I don't Have know. you seen the art? Yes. Some of it's pretty dark. Yeah, I know. I like it. There's a lot of body horror. I like your art. Yeah. And I like the body horror in your art. <laughs> Is this part of the podcast? I don't know. <laughs> From what I understand, and again, we've talked about how it's difficult to nail this down and the definitions are supposed to be elusive, and I'm also an observer, but from what I understand... Dolls can represent those who have experienced trauma and abuse and now maybe feel like a broken, empty vessel who whose goal is to be posed by mm. another, oftentimes a witch. So witches okay. are oftentimes perpetrat- perpetrators of abuse or manipulation. Oh, so witches are basically a, like a negative force? I wouldn't in- necessarily say that. I oh, okay. I don't know, but I'm I'm trying to avoid like using those kinds of descriptors as like good or bad or negative because I Mm -hmm, feel mm -hmm. like this space is more about just exploring what is versus passing a judgment on it. I could be wrong. Interesting. Again, I could be wrong. I'm going to keep saying that. I probably said it 10 times in the last hour. (laughs) It's more about the relationships and the transformations than it is about the like, whether it's good or bad or not. And I don't mean to say like, if somebody abuses you, it's neither good or bad. I do (laughs) not think that. But in the context of being able to describe our experiences and our relationships through fiction, through creative writing, Mm -hmm. I don't know if like good and bad are necessarily used here as much. I don't know. No. I don't know. I could be wrong. Again, if you're listening and you're from the Empty Spaces community, are witches neg- more negative? I'm not sure. Maybe we can talk to Elsa again after this. Uh, angels, I have a less firm grasp on. Not that, again, my explanations are definitive in any way. From what I'm able to glean, angels may represent the self as it exists after abuse or trauma. Like, maybe there's a transformation there. But it differs from the experience of being a doll. So, like, an angel is a transformed thing as beautiful as it is dangerous, like as attached to being alive as it is detached from being alive. It's kind of what I've okay. picked up. Okay. Exploring intense experiences and thoughts and ideas can be really difficult to do, especially when you're trying to look at your own trauma up close. Like sometimes you can't see your own traumas clearly when you're staring directly at it. It's like trying yeah. to look at the sun. It's just, it's too bright. I feel that, bro. <laughs> you got to put those sunglasses on. And that's what symbols and metaphors are. They're like putting on some sunglasses oh, or like, okay. you know, when you want to watch an eclipse, but you can't look directly at the eclipse. So you make that like shoebox oh, yeah, thing yeah. and you look at the shadow of the eclipse. Right. Like you come using symbols and metaphors. You can come at the examination of your trauma sideways like you're given more space to explore it through these representative back channels than if you were than if you were to try and like speak on it in plain terms yeah i like the eclipse thing like you can observe it without it like injuring you right oh i like that yeah yeah. emergent creative writing over here i mean uh you know i wouldn't say that i'm (laughs) a empty spacer or anything yeah yet i don't know processing trauma is complex Ooh, what a what a (laughs) Wow, Unique. Kayla. What is a, what a, I don't even You're breaking some ground over I know, there. what a groundbreaking statement I just made. <laughs> trauma changes you. We know this. Yeah. Many of us desire to heal from trauma or to seek out some semblance of a recovery. Some of us wish to return to the self as it was before the trauma or to make something new that is like healthy and adjusted and moved on. Mm-hmm. It's not always that simple. And there is pressure in, you know, internal, external to quote recover from trauma and like be normal like there is that that pressure exists in in our world i even feel like sometimes i pressure myself you know like oh it's been it's been a year and a half right that's enough time yeah 
right? And like, what does that mean? Like, and then, and then I kind of catch myself t- sometimes, and I'm like, well, for, enough time for what? What is it? Like, yeah, like there's no real like how much is enough after trauma? It's right. just post trauma. Right. <laughs> it's just I the trauma happened, and now this is my life. Right. And not to say that you can you can live a life. Whatever. I don't want to, I'm not trying to psychoanalyze myself here. That's why I do a podcast so I don't have to look internally. It's so our listeners can psychoanalyze us. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. we go. Okay. It maybe seems for some that this pressure is actually oftentimes about like external comforts, not necessarily mm. for the good of the traumatized. Like it it might make others uncomfortable in some societies to like see the result of trauma in others and Living with trauma can often make it harder for us to exist comfortably in mainstream communities. Like you feel that pressure to mm-hmm. not display the fact that you were fucking traumatized. Right. It's tough. You you might see some parallels here with queer identities. So with queer identities, there is pressure to conform, to be normal, to be reined in, mm. to, you know, not be flamboyant or not speak on your experiences as they are for you because it's might make some people uncomfortable. Again, it's more, more for the comfort of others and for the benefit of the queer person themselves. Yeah, I've, I've never thought about – that makes me understand a little bit – that makes me have a little more empathy understanding there, being able to relate sometimes how I feel about my own trauma and processing it and whatever. And that's how it can feel to be queer and not ha- – like to, again, feel the pressure and the like not okayness to – like it's – it's not okay to not be okay or what, you know, like right. that, I, that, that is interesting. I have not had that perspective before. You're welcome. Not thanking you. There, there are a lot of therapeutic modalities out there for addressing trauma. So there's, you know, talk therapy and exposure therapy and EMDR and group therapy and probably ACT and DBT and I don't know, you and I did That's tapping a lot of letters. couple times. It's on and on and on. But because trauma is such a complex issue, like talk therapy isn't necessarily the only way for us to explore these complicated feelings and emotions and thoughts and ideas that arise when we confront it, especially when something like trauma, you know, we always say like, oh, trauma changes you. And it's such a big thing. Mm-hmm. If the only time, if you have trauma, the, the you're interacting with it outside of the scope of your therapy. You don't just like sit down with your therapist for right. one hour a week and go, this was my trauma time this week. And then you go away from your therapy and you don't think about it till the next, no, you're going to be interacting with it elsewhere. Right. Frequently in some cases. Yeah. Some people find kink exploration to be therapeutic. So Interesting. when I say kink, I'm referring to non-conventional sexual practices, concepts, or fantasies. So kink encompasses everything from, fetishes and paraphilias to so that's like foot fetish types like that would be the yes most common like how that was your go-to listen man i'm i'm the resident white dude who's here to explain <laughs> things to other white dudes that may be listening okay i got you have to have a translator it also encompasses bdsm which um bdsm is its own umbrella that encompasses bondage and discipline dominance and submission sadism and masochism practices this is also going to encompass like leather and latex and knife play and role play and and so much more like those are just the that's kind of scratching the surface Mm -hmm. of what kink can be delving into these alternative sexual expressions often allow people to cultivate or restore feelings of empowerment to build community to physically explore tropes in real life Mm. to engage in power exchanges establish and build trust and find a deeper understanding of oneself Mm mm-hmm Many people find a spiritual aspect in their kink play through the way that they connect with themselves, with their bodies, and with others. And many find ways to restore or engage in their sexuality in in new or healing ways after experiencing sexual trauma. Okay. Many kinky people intersect with marginalized identities, i.e. they're queer in some way, they're femme in some way, and beyond. It's it, I could really spend an entire episode on this topic in particular. Like it's a whole thing that does fall well beyond the scope of this episode and probably beyond my expertise as well. We could definitely get some experts on to talk about this. But I just I wanted to try in this little section to establish some connection between the ways in which folks may explore things like trauma, queerness and kink through an empty spaces. lens. OK, that was literally gonna be my next question is like, how does it la- relate back to empty spaces? Yeah. I'll go ahead and let Else answer the question from a far more informed place. Thank you, Else. It replied, quote, ah, the big question, 
And I'll, I'll say the question that I specifically asked was, could you share a little bit, if it's comfortable, about how folks use empty spaces in therapeutic ways? Trauma processing, kink exploration, gender and identity expression, etc. Okay. Else replied, ah, the big question. There's something I've written about before, that the goal isn't necessarily recovery. I think that idea runs through a lot of empty spaces attitudes towards trauma. There isn't any pressure to be better, capital B's. There isn't a push to mark each milestone. It's okay to linger, to examine, to be broken in a way that doesn't feel fixable. No one's judging. It's a rather freeing approach to take, really. I think that the lack of judgment is a necessary part of being a space that's actually able to engage with trauma in productive ways. All the metaphors and imagery and frameworks help, sure, because it can make it easier. But just being able to talk is the first step. Being able to talk without worrying which direction it's going to go in. Being able to talk about being damaged without being thrown away. I really like the radical acceptance idea here. And if, if we talked about that sort of at the, at the very beginning, yeah, right? Is it like that was the first thing actually that sort of penetrated my veil of not understanding <laughs> was right. the idea of radical acceptance. And I really like that aspect. I really like the concept of like, needing to like let go that this is like for something. Right. So in that response else linked to something that it's written before about the goal, not necessarily being recovery. Mm -hmm. And I want to read it. I'm going to okay. read it for us to help kind of express what I'm trying to get at here. I just want to make sure that I'm making it clear that I'm saying that the reasons why things like kink exploration and queerness and talking about trauma all comes up in this space is because those experiences often overlap. Okay, actually, I was wondering that, and that's thank you for answering that. Yeah. So I want to go ahead and read this um, this piece of microfiction that Else wrote and linked me to about how the goal isn't necessarily recovery. And this piece is called In the Flensing Wheel. The flensing wheel's teeth grind through your back. Each inch of motion tearing free fresh scraps of skin and muscle. Sparks of false sensation jitter up your skin as it yanks at your nerves. The damage grows with every passing moment, and we say, you must learn how to recover. Blood drips down hungry teeth, a riotous cacophony demanding that every unruly rivulet be perfectly choreographed. Your pain is a performance and will be judged as such. Why won't you give it a happy end? Isn't that your choice to make? You're choosing this, choosing to let it continue. The wheel grinds against you, your body broken more with every passing moment, but this is a choice. If you were stronger, you would put away these childish toys. You would become someone who is not hurt. You would become someone who isn't you, and the world would be all the better for it. It's not about that grinding wheel, that decay steadily spreading through your body. It's not about the source, the miasma, the tainted air choking your every breath. None of that matters. It's not even about the performance, not really. It's about the light shining in all those watching eyes, about dancing and uplifting dance, showing that everything is really okay, reminding the audience that they can be strong just like you are. Cover the flensing wheel with a pretty cloth. It's still there, but at least no one has to see all those weeping calluses you've grown to shield yourself from it. At least no one has to see that the pain still continues. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really have any. That's uh, that's my two word response. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll link to that as well so that folks can read it again because. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That was I, in case it wasn't clear. That was very good. It's v it, yeah. I that was a. I mean, like I was. Uh, it just took me a minute to like summon words for it i had a hard time getting through it because it like kind of made me emotional yeah. <laughs> like i'm a little teary um i did kind of want to make one more connection just going back to how else said that there's something co like it's cozy that queer as default is is in this community yeah and I, I don't think cozy is the right word to use here but i i feel that there's a similarity there with like trauma being the default and living with trauma being the default. I was just going to say that. It's not cozy, but it does make it, you know, a quote, 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 unquote, safe space. Right. It's a cozy bed of nails. Yeah. It's a cozy little flensing wheel. But like to, to, for, for, for 
being like an exposed nerve of trauma as default mm-hmm. and not having any sort of like, oh, no, and if I bring this up, it's, oh no, what's going to happen? It's like, right. yeah, talk about safe space, man. Yeah. I just... That, Super feel that. Yep. Uh, I, I felt I, that in that story. Right. Yeah. Right. I did want to read more stories to you all. It was really hard to choose what stories to read because there are many beautiful and ugly and interesting and repulsive and bloody and gory and delicious pieces of fiction that make up the Empty Spaces community. And if I tried to narrow it down to the best stories, like we would be here for a very long time. (laughs) Instead, I'd like to invite our listeners to explore this community for themselves, especially if this aesthetic speaks to you, especially if you're one of our listeners who is plural or queer or traumatized or all of the above. Again, Shout out Tulpa. <laughs> Tulpas, I hope you're still with us. I, I know some are. I, we have, we have, dude, we have Tulpa patrons. We're so lucky. I, we really are. I, I will I will link to the list of identified empty spaces writers on Twitter for you to check out for yourselves. And if you're not sure where to start or you're feeling overwhelmed, else linked me to a kind of weekly roundup of ES stories put together by a Twitter user named at Divided Into One. These weekly tea parties, as they're called, allow writers to highlight stories they're especially proud of. Mm, That's cool. Before we head to the criteria, I want to talk a little bit about the gatekeeping in this community or the fact that there is none. Mm, mm -hmm. The ES movement is specifically not gatekept. From what I understand, if something resonates with you here, then it's for you. There's no one arbiter deciding what is and is not ES, kind of like what you were talking about before. Like, what if there's something that doesn't pass the the empty spaces trope check? Like, that doesn't exist. It's There's no one sitting there going, you can come in, you can't. Regarding the gatekeeping, though, like, I, I, I know I asked this sort of before, but I, I just want to ask it again. It's like, I know, and we know, I mean, we've seen online communities do have a, a tendency, if you will, if they are not curated, to sometimes attract or frequently attract not good right. things. You're talking right? about like, like how Reddit threat, Reddit forums can mm-hmm. be pulled to the alt-right. Exactly. Like the reasons why we do actually need to ban things like r slash incels and r slash the Donald and Donald Trump and Marjorie Taylor Greene from Twitter and Nick Fuentes from Twitter. You know, like that's – so is there curation and, – and God knows like everything from Facebook. But if, <laughs> is there – some sort of like guardrail curation against that kind of thing. I think that that's kind of similar to asking like, well, who's doing the, the arbiting of um, who's making sure that impressionist artists don't be Nazis. Oh, right. Okay. It's not really a Reddit forum where there's like a mod who founded the group and is, you know, keeping people in and out. Right, it's, and it's not like somebody replying to somebody else's post right. and then somebody replying to that. Like, this is on Twitter, so if yeah. somebody goes full Nazi, it's on the Twitter forum. It's, you okay. know, kind of up to Twitter to, you know, work on that or remove that, which, mm-hmm. you know, Twitter does and does not to certain degrees. You know, sometimes they'll kick Nazis off. A lot of times they won't. Sometimes they'll kick transphobes off. A lot of times they won't. But in terms of just this community in and of itself... Yeah, saying, well, how do we how do we make sure bad actors don't get involved? I don't know if you can the mm-hmm. same way. I don't know if you can stop people from doing impressionist paintings of sure Nazi regalia. But you but you make it, you help me understand it there as like a it's like more of a collection of art with you know this like sort of you know fluid fluid tropes and themes versus right. a like place for people to come like post. You know, Reddit posts about how Tartaria Correct. is Correct. real and yeah, yeah. Because, okay. yeah, it's not a specific location. It's just mm-hmm. a loose collective on Twitter. Right, right. Else pointed this whole entire thing out to me with its closing thoughts. Quote, I think that there are probably as many views of what empty spaces is and answers to the questions you've asked about it as there are people in it. I don't think my own answers are any more true than those that anyone else might come up with. It really does mostly run on vibes. <laughs> yes. So good vibes only. Good vibes only. That's awesome. Actually, no, we said we weren't using good or bad. So vibes only. <laughs> Fun vibes. <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't know. Uh, wait, though. Hold on. We can't get to the criteria yet. What the hell was that first tweet? We'll get to that. <sighs> There's something naturally ephemeral about the art that's created in empty spaces. Like it's on Twitter, it can easily get lost to the sands of the internet, it's harder to search for. 
it contains qualities of outsider art. So that's art made by those outside the mainstream and has little mm -hmm. contact with the conventions of the established art world. It just, it makes this thing difficult to pin down, to define, to even talk about. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why there's so little written about it now. Like I did not find any sort of coverage, journalistic or otherwise on it or, really? or any analysis, you know, done on it outside of the analysis that we've talked about Are by we those within it. breaking the story? We're breaking the story. And yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not pinned down. And given the vibes of the space, I think that maybe that's for the better. Yeah. Are we uh, are we the bad guys here? Like, yes. are we attempting to pin it down? Probably. And, like, we're the, we're the antagonists of the story. <laughs> I know. This, it seems like it's actually it has won though. It seems like empty spaces versus culture just weird. They won because I don't think we've really pinned it down. It just doesn't seem like it's capable. Of we being said pinned there's it down. this thing over here. That's what we right. did. We pointed at it. Right. It's like look at the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> so. Let's go ahead and do our criteria. I have a feeling that this might be quick. Okay. Criteria. Number one, charismatic, charismatic leader. leader. Absolutely not, because this is such a, like, There is a, like, up a couple founders where we're like, oh, we can point sure. to at Eager Girls and at Trauma Doll and at Bad Ends Doll. Like, these are the folks where their initial writing in 2021, you know, gave way to the rest of the collective. Right. But, yeah, there's no But arbiter. of all the things we've talked about, on this show, like this is one of the more ground up versus top down. Yeah, for sure. So I would say low. Expected harm. Uh, it seems like that's negative, probably. Yeah, it's like, like the opposite. It's, expected therapeutic. Right, expected <laughs> therapy and expected like radical acceptance. Right. So, yeah. Uh, presence of ritual. Presence. Oh, that's high. That's a high one, baby. That's high. There's I feel like I, the wazoo. I love engaged it. in some of that ritual by going to some of these websites that you sent me. Uh, niche within society. It does seem very niche. It is very niche. We are some of the only folks talking about it outside of the actual community itself, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Mm -hmm. I mean, flash fiction is not super niche, as you right. pointed but out. We're talking about empty spaces. We're talking about specifically empty spaces, yeah. Anti factuality. Don't really, don't doesn't really apply. NA? <laughs> yeah. Like... Not, doesn't Facts apply. aren't it's this isn't about critical thinking so right. like it's about like discarding that sort of like that sort of at the, you 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 check that in at the door right, on purpose. Right. Uh life consumption, percentage of life consumed. Uh I don't feel like I got a good sense of that, but even if this was something that somebody devoted a lot of time to, it doesn't seem like it's the type of thing that would like negatively impact other parts of someone's life. Right. Like, I don't think you're going to, like, quit your job and, like, lose friends over to, this. To do your flash fiction. Right, right. Dogmatic beliefs. Um, being that it is, like, very explicitly non gate <laughs> Yeah. No. And, like, there's no real definitions of anything. Yeah, it's like, this is... This is definitely the – that's the, the one that it scores the lowest on, right. and I don't think we'll ever have anything that scores lower than that. There. Chain of victims. Uh, there's maybe some chain, but there's definitely not victims. I mean, like, I definitely want to, like, tell people about it. Does I that know, count? I know, right? <laughs> um, is it safe or unsafe to exit? I imagine that it is that there's no consequence at all. It, it just seems like it, <laughs> it seems like the type anymore, of thing where yeah. you just sort of, like, like lightly float into it and lightly float out. Right. Like, without any sort of, like, it's like there's no gate on the way in so probably no gate on the way out either i think that makes sense so we scored high on ritual and niche and low to negative on everything else mm -hmm. is empty spaces a cult this is a just weird this is just weird it is in very, the best of it ways is very deliciously weird so now that we've done the criteria now we've done all that yes we can go revisit the initial tweet that kicked this whole thing off oh thank god let's see how well you understand it now yes again the tweet you're not going to because no, it's, cause I don't it's think a joke and you're not funny. <laughs> you don't wow. understand comedy. Wow. Wow. Someone's gatekeeping over <laughs> Definitely there. Definitely gatekeeping your ability I'm a white to laugh. dude, so the only kind of comedy I understand is just like being a jerk like Anthony Jeselnik. Yeah. That's the only thing I get. The tweet was from at Yuri Rando, also known as Frog Kosarek, and it read, Sorry to ruin your fun, but empty spaces is not OSHA compliant and needs to be shut down. You can't just have PTSD fawners lie on the floor and wait for a sadist with poor boundaries to walk all over them. Classic unsafe work environment. What if the sadist trips and falls? I think I understand you get like it now? <laughs> 90% of it. It's just making a joke on like 
the OSHA compliance of this like nebulous oh, okay, ephemeral okay. That I got. space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's so, everybody's talking about empty spaces, but sorry to ruin your fun. That space is not OSHA compliant. They don't have. <laughs> you can't just have a bunch of like yeah dolls strewn about because then like what if a what if a witch comes through and trips on them might hurt themselves. Okay, actually I do, I feel like a hundred percent. I there get that go. joke now. We get it. But since I like you said like lack a sense of humor, I didn't laugh. <laughs> you didn't laugh. Instead, I have to do things like say that I got the joke. That's funny. That is, that's a funny thing. Ha 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 No, but I do get it. It's funny. I just want to say, I am so impressed by this usage of Twitter. Like, I, it's like kind of. It I f- almost redeems the website. <laughs> I do feel like there's a fundamental shift happening in my own reality right now where it's like, Twitter is a tool that can feel so limited. Like, it's politics and fighting and dunking and current events. Like, that's what it's for. It's for tweeting about what's going on and empty spaces just feels like a much more beautiful and expansive and innovative way to utilize this tool. Right. Right. It makes me feel like actually redeeming is a pretty good word. Like Like there's people building worlds on this thing while like we're over here sitting being like, Oh, somebody said a political thing. Like that's, I'm very angry at yeah. the latest thing that Marjorie like, Taylor Greene said. What the fuck am I doing talking about politics all day long on Twitter when I could be like yeah. reading about what Angel Girls are doing on the like Hollywood overpass? Right, and it's like flash fiction, so it's just like bite size whenever you right. want. So to close this out, I want to read some of the initial thoughts that kind of poured out of me at 4:30 a.m. the night that I discovered <laughs> empty spaces. When you fled the bedroom, I was uh, like, what yeah, the hell's going and on? I and I then this like got its hooks into me and I went, I know I have to talk about this. And like, these are the things that I typed out that were, it was making me think and feel. (laughs) So to quote myself, quote, my world is small. Maybe empty spaces is a place for people to combat that feeling by exploring the vast expanse of expression. Empty spaces expands your world. People are using Twitter in a way that is so beyond the tracks that it's laid out for us. I'm realizing now how limited my own interactions with and expression of the world are. I want more. People in empty spaces are giving and receiving and experiencing and expressing more. I don't write for fun or for pleasure, ever. It's always self-expression, yes, but what I write always has a business-minded component to it. Whatever I write, it has the Mm. goal of being something I can sell. This makes me want to spend time writing simply for the self, for expression and pleasure and no other reason except maybe to expand and explore. I think that's awesome. And like, again, the... The flash fiction of it means that, like, you, you're not sitting like, I should write a novel. Nobody ever writes a novel. You know what I mean? Like, a novel. <laughs> it, it, you, there's the barrier to entry for that is so high, but right. anybody can just go write, you know, a few sentences. Right. Right. Like, anybody can cre- be creative on that, like, micro level, which is, like, another awesome aspect. You know, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you to Else for the work it's done on defining the space and for answering all of my questions. Thank you to Kate at Eager Girls for helping to kick off this movement and contributing to it endlessly. Thank you to at Trauma Doll and at Bad End Dolls and at Alara Fay and at Sheepwave N and at EVRM Gold and at Yuri Rando and to everyone else engaging in and exploring and excavating the world of empty spaces. I'm greatly looking forward to watching it unfold. This is Kayla. And this is Chris. And this has been Cult. Or just empty spaces. (laughs) Just weird.